All right, four ways to turn a stool. And I'm not sure what the other three guys are going to do, but that's all we have to go on. Turn a stool. Okay, no size. Three legs, four legs. Well, we'll find out. This is the piece of wood I'm going to use today. This is a nice piece of uh, mahogany. I think that'll be really nice to turn. And I'm going to make this stool for a little girl. Third birthday for this uh, special child. Anyway, I'm going to make a heart stool. So here's my heart pattern right on this end. That's going to be the seat. And let's turn this up. And I've got three legs. I'm going to make a three-legged stool. Okay. This over here is going to be waste. And I can use that for tool handles or something like that. So, um, what are the areas of focus that I'm going to do on this stool? Well, I'm going to do a little carving on the top, on the, on the heart part, where the, that little baby's going to sit. So the other part of this I'm going to add is, on the legs, I'm going to thread them into the bottom of the seat. Okay? I'm not going to have a through tenon or anything like that, or, or a wedge on the top of the the leg, but I'm going to uh, turn. I'm going to use these cast acrylic pieces for a male and female thread, and I'm going to put those on the top of the leg and inside the seat on the bottom. So that'll be kind of fun. That'll be a little bit different. And uh, I need to ship this eventually, so it's going to be, well, uh, maybe a little bit easier to ship. So let me readjust my camera and we'll start looking at milling this wood down and cutting it up and some of the dimensions that we're going to need for this project. All right, now I need to take a second and look at my design for my, my stool, okay? You're looking at an old stool that I have in my shop. It's just kind of a, a stool I used to work off of. And I'm looking at the splay, looking at this angle right here compared to this string. Okay, this string is 90 degrees to the bottom of this stool. So this angle right in here is right at 21 degrees. And I think the splay on this is, is too much. So I'm going to aim for more of a 15 degree leg angle off this 90 degrees. And it you know, really comes down to where you measure that from. But uh, anyway, we'll get into that a little bit more when, when I uh, go to put the legs into the bottom of the stool. So we'll move this out of the way. All right, now I am going to turn this into a little bit of a thread chasing project. And there's nothing better to chase a thread in than this acrylic rod. Okay, this is cast acrylic, and if you ever do this, it needs to be cast acrylic, not extruded. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do, let me move some of this out of the way, and I've got, I've got different diameters of this solid uh, rod. A little, little on the pricey side. This particular one is hollow. Okay, it's, a, it's like a tube, which is just ideal. So I spent some time this morning doing a little thread chasing. And I, and I chase threads with my 10 TPI thread chaser. All right. So this bit here will go up under the seat. Okay. And I'm not sure if it'll be that big or that long. I don't think it'll need to be. But I'll embed that in the bottom of the seat. This, oh, come here. This one. I'll just form a tenon on my leg, the top of the leg, and that will thread into this. And I use a 10 TPI thread chaser, which is just uh, really, really nice for something like this. Nice coarse threads. And uh, anyway, there you go. We'll see more of this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you thread chasing little bit. So the next thing I need to do is take my my wood and 
Uh, I'll work on probably the legs first. And what I have here from here to here, I think is 14 or 15 inches, and that's too long. I need to make, make the entire height of the stool maybe 10 or 11 or 12 inches. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll move on to that, so stay tuned. I'm going to begin by, by cutting my three legs um, on the bandsaw here. Okay, so there I've got three legs, and this leftover piece will be good for um, tool handles or little bowls or something. Now let me find my seat, and I'm going to cut it. Okay, now here's my seat blank, and I use some contact cement to uh, glue this uh, poster board pattern onto that. Now what I've done at the very top of this, I don't know if you can see this, I've drilled a hole in here. So if I go in here with a bandsaw, I use that as a relief so I can uh, turn that corner and continue on with my cut. Otherwise, it's a little bit difficult to back that off. So that's a good thing to do. Turn my bandsaw, turn my dust collection on, and we'll cut this out. Now I'm not going to be too quick to take my, my pink pattern off here. I'm going to leave that on there. i got to do a little bit of sanding. Okay, I've got my seat and my legs cut to uh, maybe a rough length. you got to remember that I'm going to put probably an inch and a half of the leg length up into the seat. i got to take some of this diameter I gotta take some of this thickness off. So right now, it's 13 inches to the top of this, minus an inch and a half. So I think that'll be a good, a good size for a kid. Yeah, let's move on. The centers of each one of these. And I'm simply gonna start these at least between some sort of a drive and a live center. I've got my, my threaded insert all ready to go. This part right here, which is really a tube, okay, I'm going to form a tenon on the end of the leg and glue that in with some epoxy. And then this will go in the bottom of the seat. So I've got one of these done. This is actually my prototype, but that'll certainly work for one of my threaded inserts. And I'll show you at least 
how I did one of these and uh, not all three of them but just to give you an idea what I did there's my heater coming on all right now I I did a really nice little segment there rounding this leg blank over and I forgot to turn my camera on anyway this is what it looks like right at 11 inches okay and I'm I'm gonna round this over to begin with I've got the centers marked make sure we're all locked down good I want to show you what I have driving this piece of wood this is a safety drive that comes with the robust lathe and it's got a ring right here that threads onto this okay this is a drive center okay there's no ball bearing in this not a live center so this uh, you can remove that for a smaller blank maybe a box blank or finial or something and that threads back on there and it's designed to uh, spin if you get a catch okay so that'll that'll actually spin depending on how tight you have your your tail center so let's try this again we'll try to keep the camera moving oh well find my face shield Now the next operation, I need to form a tenon right here for my uh, insert. This will uh, glue on to this part of my leg on the top of that and that other corresponding insert will go up into the uh, bottom of my seat. And I'll show you in a second how I arrived at this. Okay, if you're a thread chaser. so. I'm going to mark this. And keep in mind this is just a, a tube, that acrylic rod that I've got that uh, chased. We got threads chased in that. And maybe just for the heck of it I'll I'll measure this. This is a uh, I'll mark that on my caliper. Okay, now I put a little taper on the end of this, so let's just see how close we are. Well, I'm close, but no cigar, but it uh, won't take much more to get down to where I need to be. Make sure I'm centered again. Okay, now there's always a little bit of work off camera. Um, I've actually got my insert just slid over the, the threads on my live center. And I just uh, turn my lathe on and kind of check that right there without having to take everything apart. So I took a, a little bit uh, narrower parting tool and fine-tuned that. It's a little bit tight, but I'll 
I'll put some epoxy in there. Yeah, and we'll be all set. All right, now I'm working on my legs here. And I've got them all rounded over. And the next thing I've done is I've dimensioned this tenon for my insert that's going to go on the top of the leg. So the next thing I need to do is put these on the lathe and decide on a profile. And that's next. Now I've got one of the legs, actually I've got that reversed because I can now have access to the entire leg from the bottom to the top. This is the top that will go into the bottom of the, the seat. And I've decided on a very simple shape. Okay, I want this to be more like a milking stool than a Windsor chair. I don't need to put a lot of detail into this. So we'll just kind of make this one the pattern or the template. And I'm going to take most of this down with a spindle roughing gouge. Alright, now it's always a good idea to take a little time and practice what you're doing. Alright, I'm going to take a skew chisel and I'm going to start rounding over the bottom of this particular leg right here. And I got the camera repositioned to give you a little bit better view of this. And I've got a nice tool rest on, on my banjo that I can get my hand under here that will help me um, really pull that tool into the tool rest. All right. I'm turning about 1200 RPM. that shape. What I'm going for right here is bulbous. I want this to be a little bit uh, bulbous in shape. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go back to my spindle roughing gouge and complete the rest of this. And it's going to be a little bit of a, a taper into the top of my leg. And I'm going to start by establishing the diameter down here on this end of my leg.
All right, now I wanted to give you a backed off view of how I'm moving here. Okay, I'm, I'm letting my knees do most of the work here and I'm going back and forth. I'm holding my tool pretty much uh, stationary. I got, I got the tool handle into my hip right here and I'm just kind of moving. So I need to come, come to this point where I'm going to end up and be able to just make that one uh, motion. We'll start here. One more pass. Let me show you one more aspect of this leg. This needs to sit on the ground or on the floor. Okay, so it's going to sit like this and because that's rounded over, uh, I don't need to make a flat spot or anything or do a chamfer on that. That's just going to be uh, just kind of a good position for that stool leg to sit. All right, now I just need to turn the other two and then we'll move on from there. Okay, I just sanded to 400 grit, and I'm going to put a little bit of X uh, abrasive paste on here. Okay, I've got my sanding done, and I finished the legs starting with uh, Tom Ackley's abrasive paste. I put some shine juice on there and I finished up with a drying oil. So I've got all three of my legs done. Now on to a little thread chasing on the inserts. All right, I have a lathe over here set up to do a little bit of thread chasing. I've got uh, one of my connections, my inserts, completed right here. So here's two more all ready to go, the male and the female. And they'll fit on the end of my uh, stool legs. So let's go find the lathe and we'll do a little bit of thread chasing on these. Alright, now I'm ready to drill out this part of my insert. This is going to be the uh, female uh, part of the insert that's going to go up in the bottom of my my seat. I'll drill that out and when I did the prototype I used this drill bit so I've got everything set up uh, accurately and I can just reproduce this. And then this is going to be the male thread and I'll do that after I drill all three of these pieces and do the thread chasing on there. Okay, and I just broke through to the other side. I'm going to use a 10 TPI thread chaser on this and I'm going to just hone this a little bit. And I'll show you uh, thread chasing on one female and one male part of my uh, 
insert. And I'm going to use my armrest tool. We'll get that lined up properly. And I'm right at 325 RPM. I got a good groove going. That didn't take very long to do that. And I'm going to go all the way through. All right. A little bit of squealing on that, but uh, that's as long as that took to chase that thread. That's not too bad. Okay, time to chase the male thread on this part right here. I've got this chucked up between centers. Okay, I've just kind of made a couple little wooden uh, jam chucks. So I'm going to go down to Chasing speed, 325 or so. Now it'd be nice if I could get my tool in here at a little bit different angle, but I'm, I'm kind of bound to this. And I'm not sure if this is going to work. I can just get that groove started. I think I need a little bit more speed. take this out and test it one of my other pieces here so I think that's going to work I think that is uh, just starting to thread on there but I need to reduce this diameter just a little bit that's still just a little bit tight all right Okay, I'm making some final adjustments on my connections here. And each one of these is going to be sort of unique. And I've got these marked. So I'll, I'll have the male and the female threads um, connected together. And now I'll go on to the next one. At some point, I'm going to glue these into my project. So there's number one. Good threads. All right, I've been doing quite a bit of preparation off camera to uh, drill my angles for my legs. I've got a piece of scrap wood here. I've drilled a hole in that. And I like the angle, it's 15 degrees. I'll explain that a little bit more in just a second. Now, it's all about templates and prototypes. So I've got a piece of scrap plywood here with the uh, location of my three holes that I want to drill. Okay, I've got an inch and a half Forstner bit in my drill press. And I got everything locked down. I got a clamp over here. I've got a, a jig. And I could take all this stuff off my drill press and readjust my metal table. Well, it's easier just to make something that's temporary. I may stick it away and use it eventually someplace else. So what I'm going to do here, and I probably won't show you this, I'm going to drill my three holes and then put my legs in there and see how that looks. So, 
probably find me some clamps and clamp those down. But I don't think I'm going to show it to you. All right, I've got my prototype seat all done. And this is mostly just to see how this is going to look. I think it'll be fine. Okay, now let's see if I can turn this upside down. Right side up. No, I can't. Okay. All right, now the holes aren't very deep, so I've just got that sort of sitting there. And I'm going to take a step back and see how this looks. Yeah, I like it. I think that'll be really good. I like the height. I could change that by adjusting the length of the legs. So, yeah. Let me show you my angles. Let me show you how I arrived at the angles on this. All right, now one really neat tool that I've got here, it's made by General. Okay, it uh, says Tool Smart on it. Okay, and once I turn this on, it gives me a digital readout of the angle. So you can zero that out right there and then open it up and what I was aiming at was a 15 degree angle and this is pretty accurate this is very nice set that aside and here's another prototype okay so this is a complementary angle along 180 degrees so this is the 15 degree angle I want my leg. And that's 15 degrees off 90. This dotted line is 90 degrees to the bottom of my seat. Okay, so I have 15 degrees and 75. That's 90 right in here. Well, don't worry about the 75. And I've got that 75 degree angle set on my platform, on my drill press. So this is harder to explain than it is to do. So find my seat and I'm tempted to leave this um, pink pattern on there and I can just draw right on there. Now all I need to do is go down about an, I don't know what that is, maybe an inch and a quarter and I've got plenty of thickness but it, it, later on I'm going to round over the, the edge, wherever the top is. I'm going to round that edge over and I need to make sure I don't go through. I can set the depth on my drill press. So that's the next operation. I'm going to take the real thing and go over there and um, drill the holes on my seat. All right, now I'm ready to drill my seat. I've got my depth stop uh, set here for the the depth of these, I won't go down too far. And I've got everything clamped down as, as well as I can clamp it down, so. Okay, I'm going to find one of my legs. Okay, now I got one of my legs here. What I've done is I've glued the, the male thread in. That's glued into the top of the leg. So the rest of that is going to fit right down in there. And I like that. I think that's going to be good. That worked out really well. I like that that angle and I'm going to drill the rest of these off camera there's no sense showing you the same thing I just did so I got to glue in the the female recess part of this 
And that's going to be pretty cool. That's going to be a little twist on this project is threaded legs. Whoever would have thought. So these inserts are going to go down in there. Yeah. And I didn't go through the top of my my stool. So anyway, we're getting really near the end. I'm going to cut some of this out because you've already seen a lot of this. The video is getting a little bit long. So I'm going to drill all these out and I'll show you what I have and what the next step is in this project. Well, I'm back in my cold storage room and I've got my planer going. I'm going to run my seat through my planer and I've got it attached to a board. I'll show you a little bit more of this later on in the video. I think this is the safest way to do this and it works very well. I didn't uh, opt for turning this on the lathe. I thought this would be a, a much better option. And then later on, I just simply take a router and do a round over all the way around the edge of the seat. What I just showed you, I ran my seat through my planer back there. And what I did was I attached it to this board that I had sitting back there. I have double stick tape and I use hot melt glue all the way around this thing to secure it. I wasn't sure about running this through the planer because it's not very long and you have to be careful that your rollers connect to this uh, in the right places. Anyway, I'm going to take advantage of this um, seat glued to this board right now and I'm going to use my router and start uh, profiling the edge of this. Okay, now I've got a very large round over bit in my router. I've got a ball bearing that's going to run along the, the edge of my seat. I've got a, a large plunge router. Variable speed. I'm going to get suited up with some protective gear and I'll probably do a voiceover. Initially I was going to put this on my lathe and, and turn this, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to hit all the edges this is not round. I think this is a better option. So this is the top of my seat. And uh, anyway, let me suit up and I'll do a little routing on this and then we'll move forward. All right, now I'm back on my workbench and I've got my router. And I'm going to do a round over around the edge of the seat. And you'll notice I go in both directions. Okay, and this is called a climb cut in certain situations. I want to go with the grain. So sometimes I'm going in what appears to be the wrong direction with my router, but I don't want to get any tear out on the edge of my seat. So I make several passes. I've got a plunge router and I simply uh, advance the, the cutting edge of my router bit lower. Here I've got the Merlin 2 carver and I'm going around the seat and I'm doing a little bit of hand work with my carver and this works very well. I also have some different sanding discs which are very aggressive and that works very well also. Now I think I'm going to show you my random orbit sander. Oh, actually, here is my block plane, and I'm just kind of smoothing out some of those rough areas. And here's my random orbit sander. I do a lot of sanding on the top of this seat in uh, various areas of my shop, including my drill press. And uh, I get a very nice finish on that, and uh, more on the finishing aspect of this later on. All right, now I've been applying some, some finish to my my stool parts. Got the legs pretty much completed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue in my female insert. Okay, and I've got those all marked. I got them all ready to go. And what I'm going to use for uh, the glue is uh, two ton epoxy. That's going to give me a little bit bigger uh, open time. And that's going to give me a little bit longer open time. I think it's 20 minutes on this. And really it's supposed to be stronger. So 
I've got all these marked. I got all my inserts marked and a piece of tape on here and I'm ready to go so I'm gonna um, mix up some of this epoxy and we'll show you a little bit of this you know we're looking at a 10 or 15 hour project probably 15 hours and it's hard to show that in an hour but somebody may be interested in in how I did this part of it I think epoxy is really the way to go here since I'm using an acrylic okay now I've got my epoxy all mixed up here and the trick is mixing up as much as you need or maybe a little more so you don't run short I've got a little uh, stir stick this is actually from my um, casting when I'm adding color to my resin now I'm going to be real careful when I put this in there I don't want to get any of this on my threads obviously so I'm going to just coat the the recess on these just put a little bit in there at first and then um, I'll test fit my my inserts I don't think I need a, a whole lot I've got a pretty good fit on these so let's find the first one and I bring that out and yeah I think that's coating that pretty pretty well All right, I think that's going to be good. I got one more to get in here. And I'm going to let those dry a little bit and I'll I'll stick my legs in there. Thread them in. Yeah. Okay, so I'm letting the epoxy dry a little bit. I got my seat turned over and I'm applying the last application of a fast drying polyurethane. And I think that'll be pretty durable for this sort of a project. Yeah. And I'm very close to showing you the finished stool. Uh, I haven't seen it with legs on myself. So uh, stay tuned. And so we'll unveil this uh, heart-shaped stool.